Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 75. It's a red letter day, guys. We are going to talk about equations of lines, okay? What we're talking about is our Cartesian coordinate system and the way that we can draw a line on this any way we want. There's two examples, right? Each of these lines has a specific equation and a big part of high school algebra is studying these equations and learning all kinds of interesting things about them. It's going to be so fun. You already know how to graph them um, by making a chart like this, right? And we say here's X and here's Y. Let me just give you a made up equation of a line. Um, Let's just say y equals 2x minus 3. Okay, so we can choose values for x, and then we calculate 2x minus 3, and then we say that value is our y. So, for example, if x is 1, then it's 2 times 1 minus 3. That would be 2 minus 3. That would be negative 1, right? And we can find a handful of points. Let's do another one. Let's do negative 1. 2 times negative 1 minus 3. That would be negative 2 minus three more, right? And then our rule is to always do three because then if you screw up one of them, then your line won't be straight and you can fix it. Two times zero is zero. Zero minus three is negative three, okay? So I don't want to look at those anymore. I'm going to draw a new graph to graph this, right? This is how we've done it in the past. I'm getting your feet on solid ground. That's the best way to learn something new is to figure out what you already know and then add to it. It's like installing um, coat hooks in your brain. Then if, if we remind you of where the coat hooks are, then you can hang the new information on the existing hooks. I know it's brain science and you're learning it here from me, Dr. Stryker. Um, but seriously, it helps to know where the hooks are so that you can attach the new information. And that's what I'm doing right now is I'm reminding you of where you've got your hooks. Okay, so we graph these. 1 and negative 1. Negative 1 and negative 5. So that would be way down here, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 0, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we would draw a line that connects them. And they look pretty straight, don't they? All right, and then we say that the name of this line is y equals 2x minus 3. And every single pair of points on this line, not only the whole numbers, but the fractions and the decimals, every x value will calculate out to have a y, and that x and y will be on this line. So all the different values for x and y that you can imagine make up this line. Now, what we want to do is we want to focus on the way that this equation is written, and we want to learn how to graph without having to do this dumb table. I'm not a fan of the tables. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of globalize this. And here it is, the holy grail. Y equals MX plus B. That is the generic form of the equation of a line. It's technically called slope-intercept format for reasons that will become really obvious. Uh, but we're gonna learn how to, and, and in this example, m, our slope, was two, and b, our y-intercept, was negative three. I'm gonna explain those words in more detail, but that's how it works in a practical situation. We have numbers for m and b, all right? Now, m, let's start with b, b is easier. B is what's called the y-intercept. It's the place where our line crosses the y-intercept. And it's the place where x equals 0. Okay? We found it. I plugged 0 in as one of our points, and we found that the y-intercept of this line is negative 3, right? Because I graphed it as 0, negative 3. That's where we can see that's where it crosses, but we can also see it right here. Right? B 
is the y-intercept, and there's the minus 3. I didn't have to calculate a point to find that. I could have just looked at this and automatically seen, oh, the y-intercept is negative 3. Cool, right? Okay, now, so that's the b. m is called the slope. I think of the slope as being a treasure map that allows you to go from the y-intercept to another point on the line, and it gives you a way to start drawing. Okay, the slope can be either a positive slope or a negative slope, depending on whether there's a minus sign in front of this or not. A positive slope, and this will make sense to you in a minute, we call the rise over the run. The negative slope is the sink over the rent. Now copy that down and then I'll tell you what the heck I'm talking about. Of course you're copying all this down. I have every confidence. Make sure you keep doing it. I know that we've been at this for quite a few months now and some of the things I told you way back in September, you might be thinking, oh, she doesn't mean that anymore. We don't really have to write this down. Yes, you do, please. It's far more interesting if you've got something to do while I'm talking. Okay, so what happens is we go to the y-intercept first. It's right there. We go to that place. Then we take the slope and use it as a treasure map. If it's a positive number, we look at it as a fraction and we go up, whatever's in the numerator, that number of steps. And then we go to the right, whatever's in the denominator. Now you look at our slope here and you go, it's not a fraction. Well, guess what, my friends? We can make it one anytime we want, right? So we always want the slope to be a fraction. And if it isn't one already, we make it one. Now here comes the treasure map, right? Ours is a positive slope. So we go up two steps, one, two. And then we go to the right one step, because that's the denominator, one. And look where it lands us. On the other point that we just happened to pick out and graph. That was just a coincidence. But now, again, we don't have to make the silly chart. We can just look at the slope in our equation and use that to find the second point that we need to graph. All right, now here's something I'm going to reference for the rest of your life. Well, at least as long as you're studying math with me, which may feel like the rest of your life, but I promise it won't be. See this little chick in a car? She's got her hair up in a little uh, messy bun. And what John's illustrating is that when the, the slope is a positive number, it's kind of like she's driving her little car uphill. Is that not cute? And when the slope is a negative number, she's going downhill. This looks like a very steep hill. I hope she's safe. I hope she's buckled in and I hope she's got really good tires. Um, so negative slopes go downhill and the little lady flies. Positive slopes go uphill and she labors um, with her vehicle. All right. Think of her convertible. Look at her little messy bun. You might want to look at this yourself. It's on page 307. When you're so when you're doing your homework, check her out because she's fabulous and I'm going to reference her. In either Algebra 1 or 2, no, it must be Algebra 2 because this is 1. There's another diagram like this and this time the little woman in the car has a ponytail, which is even more fun because you can just imagine her ponytail blowing in the breeze as she's going uphill or downhill. All right, so positive slopes and negative slopes work the same way, but they'll look different. If the slope is a positive number, it goes up. If it's a negative number, it goes down. Okay, enough about our little friend. All right, so what this means, once again, is that we can use these rules to graph without drawing the chart. Um, and the first two problems are so easy, I hate to even write them down. It's a waste of ink. Ready? 75.1. Find the y-intercept of the line whose equation is y equals 3x minus 5. Well, we know that y-intercept is the part at the end, right? It's not the part by the x. It's the plain number hanging out. And the sign is a part of it. So this one is going to be negative 5. That's the right answer. 
find the y-intercept of the line shown. Okay, well, there's the line. And look, John even labeled the point where it crosses the y-axis, right? That's what we're looking for. So it's at 5. Y-intercept is 5. That's super easy. Then we talk about, well, that's supposed to be a man. And that's his cap. I think it looks like a woman with a little messy bun. All right. Okay, the next problem, which is also not worth writing down. Find the equations of the lines graphed in the accompanying figures. Okay, so the first thing we look for, let me get my little book. Here it is. The first thing we look for is the y-intercept. So here... I look and I see, oh, the y-intercept is at positive 3, isn't it? So I know it's going to be y equals something x, and then it's positive 3, so I write plus 3. Now we take that place and we start our treasure hunt. Do we go up or down? With this line, to get to the next point, we're going to have to go down, aren't we? So that means we have a negative slope, right? The little dude is going downhill. And how do we get to the next point that we can easily see? We go down three and over two. So our slope is negative three over two. And that's the way we write the answer. How did we do? Here, it's way down here. Can you see it? Y equals minus three halves X plus three. Yay, we got it right. Okay, then let's try this one. We do the y-intercept first. Let's see, that's at negative 2. So now we can write y equals something x. And we don't have to write plus because we've got a minus 2. And now we have to go from this point to, let's go here where it crosses the x-axis. Um, that will work out just fine. We want to find another place where we can see a really clear crossing point. If you think of this as graph paper underneath, we want to cross at the lines that intersect on the graph paper. We don't want to try and count to some wonky in the middle of the line thing. So right there at this point is beautiful. So from here we have to go up. So we know it's a positive slope. We go up two and then we go one, two, three, four to the right. So it's two over four is the slope. Now, slopes can be reduced just like everything else in the world. So we'll rewrite this as x equals 1 half, or y equals, sorry, I don't know my alphabet yet. y equals 1 half x minus 2. That's our final answer, and John agrees. Okay? So that's, um, if you do get a slope that can be reduced, go ahead and reduce it. All right, now we're going to put it all together and practice graphing. And we have two of these to do. So many papers, so many books. Props galore. This book, this uh, spiral notebook, it all the pages cling to themselves. They do not want to be separated for algebra. They want to just cling together, and I won't allow it. A merciless example, 75.4. I'm going to put this up here again. Y equals mx plus b. This is the y-intercept. It's the place where our line crosses the y-axis. And this is the slope. Rise over the run. It's positive if it goes uphill. It's negative if it goes down. Okay. Graph y equals minus 3 over 5x plus 2. No more tables. No more calculating, choosing x's and calculating y's. We're done with it. Good riddance. So now what we do is we just go straight to our graph. 
and we just put in numbers as we need them. So I know I need positive two on the y-axis, so there it is. I'll put some arrowheads on because, you know, I always think of Buzz Lightyear saying to infinity and beyond. Um, and the cowboy, what's the cowboy's name? Tom Hanks, I can't think of his name. Uh, my kids are a little tiny bit too old for Toy Story. They watched it, but mostly like ironically, you know? You know how you watch Disney movies, or it's not Disney, it's Pixar, but you know how you watch kid movies when you're a little older and you're like, I'm doing this ironically. Okay, now we need to deal with our slope. Remember, the slope is a treasure hunt that gets you from the y-intercept to the second point. We don't start counting from the origin, we start from the y-intercept, right? That's where we find the treasure map and now we're ready to use it. We're going to go down three because that's the sink, right? For a negative slope, it's the sink, which means we go down, you know, like you sink into the quicksand. Um, and then we run, run is always to the right. So we're gonna go down three and over five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Do that. If your graph, graph turns out to be too small, just add on, it's fine. Okay, so we said down three and over five. So there is our second point, and now we can connect the dots. Notice, we're only working off two points here. So we have to be careful and make sure we're getting it right. Okay. The name of this line is y equals minus three-fifths x plus two. Let's do one more. Use the slope-intercept method. That means this. This is called the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. It says exactly what it is, slope-intercept, right? And it's the fun and easy way to graph. So if you see that expression being bandied about, it's just this, all right? It's just a fancy name for this. Ready? X minus 2Y equals 4. Do you hear the needle scraping across the vinyl album? I do. This is all wrong. This is not in the proper form. So as John often does, we have to fix it before we can carry on. So we need to kick the X over to the other side. And then we'll have minus two Y equals, and we want the X to be first, minus X plus four, right? We're trying to recreate this arrangement. Now we have to divide everything by minus two because that Y has got to be by himself. Okay, let's clean it up. Y equals, now this is going positive. It's gonna be X over two, but what we can do is we can basically pull the X out of the fraction so that we can see the slope really clearly. That's what we wanna do. The minuses cancel and we pull the X to the side and pop a little one in there to take its place. All right, and then this becomes minus two, right? The minus sign makes it minus four over two is two. Okay, now we have some graphable content there. We start with this, we think of Buzz Lightyear. Dang, what's the name of that cowboy? I know you guys know. That will drive me mad. Um, we go to the y-intercept first. It's at negative two. Bum, 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 there it is. Now it's a positive slope. So that means the little girl is going up the hill. And so this time with a positive slope, it is the rise over the run. The run always goes to the right, okay? It's just a question of whether the numerator is gonna take us up or down. Positive goes up, negative goes down. Bottom is always to the right. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna go up one, and over two. So there is my second point. No need to draw the evil table. And so now we connect the dots. And what I like to see is I like to see, if you've got it right there, that's fine. But I wanna see this line labeled. 
And here I just drew an arrow, here I drew an arrow. That's fine. But the name, this line has a name. And the name of it is y equals 1 half x minus 2. So I want you to make that association in your brain. All right, this is pivotal, you guys. We're gonna be, we're gonna be loving this for quite some time. Um, we're gonna get really, really, really good at these, but we aren't gonna ever do the stupid tables again. Sorry, I have a problem with those tables. In case you haven't noticed, I have a lot of hostility toward them. Kind of like the way I feel about mixed numbers. I'm not okay with mixed numbers. No, not okay. Okay, that's enough though. Goodbye.